Hello. In the next series of videos, we're going to start talking about um, electronic system design. So designing electronic systems which comprise uh, building blocks, which are comprised uh, in themselves of uh, simpler circuits. But once we go from the small circuit level to putting together those circuits and combining them into larger systems, we uh, cannot continue to analyze or design the circuits or look at the circuits at the component level. We really need to be using models to think about our circuits in simpler terms, because otherwise uh, the circuits will become uh, very soon intractable because uh, of their increased complexity. And so uh, we're going to be talking in the next couple of videos about uh, models and uh, the in electronic circuits, we have two main types of signals, voltages and currents. And so the simplest models that we can talk about are those of the model for a source, whether it be a voltage source or a current source. And so we're going to start our um, models of electronic circuits talking about voltage and current sources. And so in the case of a voltage source, uh, obviously, the simplest model will be that of uh, an element, uh, what we understand as a source, is an element uh, which is able to maintain the voltage across its terminals a constant, independently of its uh, loading condition, RL. And so uh, the current that is flowing through the circuit may vary as the load varies, but hopefully the voltage remains constant. So if we were to represent graphically how a voltage source operates, it'll just mean that regardless of loading conditions, regardless of load uh, resistance, the voltage is a constant. Likewise, for a current source, the ideal model will be that you have an element uh, which is able to maintain the current uh, through the element, through its terminals, constant, irrespective of loading conditions. And so the idea is that the voltage across the element will change as needed uh, with a varying load in order to keep the current constant. And so if you were to graphically represent that, you will have that for varying loading conditions, you have a current which remains constant. Now, these are ideal models. Uh, in practice, we know that uh, we're never going to be able to design uh, a source that is absolutely perfect for every loading condition. And so it becomes uh, the need arises to develop a more practical model that allows us to really see what the behavior of our source is going to be when we connect a particular load. And a more complete uh, model for a voltage source will be that of a perfect voltage source in series with a resistance, the output resistance of the source or the source resistance. And so in that case, If we are modeling our source as the perfect voltage source V in series with resistance RS, where this will be our new model, what's inside that box. Now we can see that, well, the voltage across the load is not going to remain constant or the voltage delivered by the source is not going to be constant irrespective of loading conditions but only when uh, there is a particular relationship between the load and the source resistances, right? And so if I am to plot now what happens uh, to my voltage, and um, since V is the voltage at the source, uh, which is going to be a constant, I'm going to represent this as V out. And so what happens to V out is that, yes, for a wide range of uh, loads, it's going to remain constant. 
But notice that um, that's only true as far as or as long as the load is low resistance is much greater than the source resistance, um, because then most of the voltage drop will be across the load. But for any other um, resistor values or sort of resistors that are comparable, source and load, you will have a voltage division between the source resistance and the load resistance. And so as your load resistance becomes smaller and smaller, you expect that the voltage drop across the load resistance will decrease as the drop across the RS resistor increases, so that the sum of the two remains the same. And uh, when the load resistance reaches a value of zero, well, in that case, the voltage across the resistor will be zero by Ohm's law. And so this is more or less the response that you will expect for a more uh, practical model. And so this will be the voltage source. A practical model for it. And again, um, we can see that it tends to the ideal behavior when RL is much greater than RS. Typically, we consider an order of magnitude to be um, much, much greater. And uh, in the ideal case above, we had assumed that the source resistance was equal to zero. And so the closer we are able to make the source resistance to zero, if we are designing a voltage source, uh, the, the more it will behave as an ideal voltage source. Likewise, we can come up with a more practical representation or model for our current source. And that typically will be represented it via a Norton equivalent circuit, given that the output is a current, which consists of a current source in parallel with a resistance. We will call that RP for the parallel resistance of the source. And likewise, we will have a load resistor connected. Our new model is whatever is included inside this box. And our output current will be the actual current that gets delivered to the load. And so if we are to represent what happens to our output current, as a function of loading conditions or load resistance, we expect that um, for, a, for small values of RL, uh, ideally RL is equal to zero, then all of the current is going to flow through the branch that has zero resistance. Uh, but as long as RL is much smaller than the parallel resistance, the upper resistance of the current source, we're going to see that that is the case. Most of the current I will be delivered to the load and so for um, smaller values of RL we expect the current will be constant but as RL changes and it approaches RP then the current is going to be divided between the two branches. We have a current divider circuit here type of scenario and so at some point this is going to start uh, decreasing. And so again we can see that we approach the ideal behavior of a current source whenever RL is much smaller than RP. And so if we were designing a current source, we can see that ideally we will want the output resistance of the source or the parallel resistance to be, um, excuse me, to be equal to infinity or trending towards infinity. And so that will be it for the models of uh, voltage and current sources, which again represent the two types of signals um, that we are going to be studying in electronic circuits, voltages and currents. And we will see that uh, every single circuit or system that comprises several circuits, we are going to be able to model the particular portion or stage of the circuit that we are designing uh, with a particular model. It may be a voltage amplifier, a current amplifier, um, a, a transconductance or transresistance type of amplifier where it will be converting uh, uh, voltage to voltage, voltage to current, current to voltage or current to current. Um, and then any prior stage uh, or any follow-up stage uh, we can typically model via a source. If the previous stage is providing an input signal in the form of a voltage, it will be a voltage source. 
If it's providing a signal in the form of a current, it will be a current source. And then uh, the subsequent stage, we can always model as a load, which typically will uh, be given by the input resistance of that subsequent stage. And so these models, even though simple, we're going to see that they are uh, very generally applied to electronic systems. Thank you.